Hello everyone and welcome to Let the Fans Talk. Week one is in the book and Sam Bradford was looking pretty good. Is this the year for the Vikings? Packers offense off to a slow start. Is this going to spell trouble for them in the future? All that and more coming up. I am your host, Ryan Freeman. Yeah, man, I'm Kenny Banyas. Uh, man, this was a weird week. Yeah. It was a... It was a hell of a weird week. Yeah. Um, there was uh, there were a few upsets that I that I saw. Yeah. It was a it was, it was, it was a, a weird, funky week. There was, was a lot of teams that performed really well that wasn't yeah. expecting to perform. Oh well. gosh, yeah, no. Ravens like, being one of them. I wasn't right. expecting the Ravens to do what they did. Oh, uh, when what people don't know when I I was I was rewatching some of the highlights when Ryan walked in. I was still just baffled about the weird loss that the Patriots had. Yeah, the Patriots suffered. Oh, that yeah. was a. So, basically, we're going to be recapping week one real quick. Uh, before we get into that, though, we just have one little piece of news because there's not much to talk about. I got one, but uh, uh, you, you go first. Okay. Um, Brian Cushing, uh, line, middle linebacker for the Houston Texans, has been suspended 10 games for violating the NFL's um, policy on performance-enhancing drugs. This is his second offense with that. Uh, he had another one back in 2010, I is think it, it was. again? Uh, I don't know. Again, the article didn't specify okay. what it was. It just said they violated the policy. Right. So, Well, that's your news. Mike Daniels of the Green Bay Packers is going to be cosplaying Piccolo. So, <laughs> your boy Mike Daniels at it again. That would be your news. You'll appreciate this. When I was watching the Packers-Seahawks games after one of the sacks that Daniels made. He did the Kamehameha. He did the Kamehameha. <laughs> like, I was going to bring that up, too. Like, I don't like the Packers as much as Ryan do. I think they're okay. But, like, I love Mike Daniels. I just got done watching that dude's interview with Funimation. And that dude is just inspiring to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with the news out of the way, we're going to roll right into a recap of week one the NFL. What a crazy week it was. So first of all, we had the Thursday night game where the Kansas City Chiefs stomped the New England Patriots. They straight up blew them the fuck out. Um, Alex Smith really showing up. Uh, not the normal check down quarterback that we're used to seeing. He was pushing the ball really deep downfield. He had a couple of touchdown passes that I think were actually... Just over 70 yards, I think, if I remember those stats right. I think so, But yeah. a couple of big-time throws by Alex Smith. Uh, Chiefs looked really good in this opener. Uh, and Tom Brady looked really mediocre. So we'll see what happens for the rest of the season. Um, Tom Brady's age might finally be catching up with him. But he just did not look like Tom Brady in that game. Man. Uh... And a lot of people were saying that, like, Maybe we underestimated how big Julian Edelman was to the offense, and Amendola went down during that game. But Tom Brady, when Julian Edelman and uh, Amendola were both in like their rookie seasons and basically had like no experience in the NFL, Tom Brady made them look like superstars. Right. Like he does that with every wide receiver. We're just used to seeing Tom Brady do that. So with a lack of that, I'm wondering if age is finally catching up to Tom Brady. It might be. I don't think it is, but it might be. It was a weird game, though, to me. It was a weird game. Because at first it looked like it's going to be a blowout going in favor of the Patriots. Right. And then after that Gronk touchdown is ruled not a touchdown, the Chiefs just went off after that and just kept rolling. It, it it was a game. It was a it, it was a weird game to see their as their first game coming back from you know winning the Super Bowl the Super Bowl. Yeah. So and being obliterated just as bad as they obliterated the Falcons. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, it was yeah, dude. I that's all I got. It was an interesting game. It was after that we had the Jets visiting the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills handled the Jets. Uh, bad news for all you Jets fans. They looked pretty piss poor, poor out there against the Bills. Sorry, Jazzy. Um, the final score was 21-12. to 12. It looks a lot closer in the score than what it was because if you're watching that game, the Bills' defense handled that Jets' offense. Like, they were not doing much against that defense. Do they have both? They, don't, they both don't have good defenses, right? Uh, I'd say Buffalo has an average defense. Okay. If a little bit below average, but okay. they're, like, right on that average line. Oh, that's very understandable. Um, then after that, 
We had the big surprise to me this week. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Houston Texans just stomping on the Texans 29-7. to Jacksonville had 10 sacks in this game. 10 of them. Telling you, it's that hurricane, man. I, I brought this up. I was like, that hurricane's going to get them. I also think it was partially Tom Savage because that boy could not play quarterback to save his life. Yeah. <laughs> I began watching these highlights. I was like, ah, oh, bear up. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, defeated the Cleveland Browns 21-18. to that's, that's a close. A lot closer than I was expecting yeah, it to be. Yeah, it's a close-ass game, dude. Um, this, this could be the Browns' year, Ryan. I think it'll be the year where they get five wins. <laughs> Will they? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, Don't say that shit. It'll happen. The Arizona Cardinals at the Detroit Lions. Uh, this was one of those games I said would be a toss-up game. Um Lions took down the Cardinals, 35-23. I think I said that the Lions would win that one. Yes. Yeah, I did. Yes. Um, Arizona looked like they were going to win it right up until running back David Johnson got hurt. He suffered a dislocated wrist, and he's going in for surgery on that. So he's a very likely candidate for injury reserve for the Cardinals, which is not good news for them, Uh. especially if Carson Palmer continues to play how he did in that game. I'm not, yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, The Buccaneers-Dolphins game was postponed, so we'll see when that game happens. Oh, I wonder why. (laughs) It's not like there's a hurricane or Um, anything. And a nail-biter for the reigning NFC champions, uh, the Atlanta Falcons at the Chicago Bears, barely got out of there with a win, 23-17. Chicago almost had some last-minute heroics to win the game, but those receivers... Got them butter hands and uh, couldn't catch a fucking ball to save their life. Dude, in those final this seconds. game was so fucking weird too. I was like, "What?" Another is one of those going games on? where I wasn't expecting to be that close. I think, I think this is a little bit of that Super Bowl hangover for the Atlanta Falcons, right? And unfortunately, I think they're proving it. Yeah, and, which sucks. Because they should have blown out Chicago, right? Like, I, I understand it's Week One and everybody's a little just getting into the routine, so teams aren't going to be looking like as good as they are at the end of the season. But Fine, we'll, I'll give them a couple more games, yeah. and if they... Because, dude, that was... That was bad. Uh, the Oakland Raiders at the Tennessee Titans. Ten, uh, Oakland took down Tennessee 26-16. to um, Oakland looked pretty good in that game. The offense looked great. Oh, yeah. Uh, Titans looked like the Titans. <laughs> Right, they, I mean, they're not bad, but they're not good. Yeah, they're you know not next I mean? level or anything. Right. It's one of those games where I'm sure Titans, every middle-of-the-road team that the Titans go up against, are, they're going to beat them. Like right. Like Houston and teams like that, because um, they're just a little bit better than like middle-of-the-road, but right. they're not great by any means. Um, another surprising one to me was the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Ravens won 20 to nothing. Um, that Ravens defense was just harassing Andy Dalton all day, making him look like a fucking scrub. <laughs> Man, I am looking at all these scores and these later games we were talking about, and they are fucking sad. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles at the Redskins, 30-17 to Eagles. Um, I mean, like, I totally saw this coming. Carson, I mean, Carson Wentz is... Becoming a pretty good quarterback, Kirk Cousins lost a lot of the weapons he had last year, and it's showing right now because that pass attack didn't look all that prolific. Um, Kirk Cousins is definitely a fourth quarter. Uh, I can't remember who said it. Somebody called him a fourth quarter stat hound. It was a former Washington Redskin player. Looking at this game, I can kind of see that because he didn't really have a lot of yards until like the late of the game. Oh, gosh. Then the absolute... Just destruction of the Indianapolis Colts visiting the Los Angeles Rams. Rams won 46 to nine and became the only team in NFL history to score two pick sixes and a safety in the same game. All right, real talk. <laughs> this is the only game I watched in entirety. Is the Rams? Is the Rams game? and Colts game? <laughs> what a bad game to watch! I know, it wasn't like fun at all. I, I got, I got the end of, I got the end of the Saints and Vikings. But real, this was the only game I watched fully, and in my head, there was just a lot of what the fucks. 
going throughout this game. Not even that I was rooting for either of the teams. Just the game itself. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? This is like some high school level fucking football. Yeah, Indianapolis got blown away. They did not look like they belonged there. Uh, uh, the Carolina Panthers visiting the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Panthers win it 23-3. to um, That 49ers offense looks pitiful. Right. They this, were not doing much. This is, oh, see, this is, like I said, these next few games, just fucking sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Seattle Seahawks uh, at the Green Bay Packers. Packers win it 17-9. to Packers defense on full display in that game. They harassed Russell Wilson in that offense all game long. Uh, I was... Mike Daniels, my boy, with uh, seven tackles, one and a half sacks, and a forced fumble. What a game. And a Kamehameha. <laughs> and a Kamehameha. And a Kamehameha. You cannot leave that alone. But, like, so so I was going to bring this up. Uh, I was on, I was on uh, the Twitter and Facebook while this game was going on. And all I could hear is people bitching about the Packers. Like, there should be so many flags going on and shit like that. People can complain about that all they want. There's plenty of calls that go against the Packers. Like, right, right. No, it's, it's a part of the game. Sometimes the calls don't go your way. It depends on who's refing the game. Right. So, and, I mean, if you want to win, then be the better team. Like I saw the highlights. It, it was easily in the Packers. It was in the Packers' hands. Yeah. Like, it, <sighs> Seattle's not what it used to be, man. We've had this conversation so many times. Mm-hmm. They they've lost a lot of people that made their team a team. Yeah. So, you know. Sorry. And then we have the New York Giants at the Dallas Cowboys. Um, <laughs> this game looked like it should have been a blowout because that New York Giants offense wasn't doing shit the entire night, and Eli Manning looked horrible, as usual. Um, Cowboys win it 19-3. Oh, God. Uh, they're really missing Odell Beckham Jr. right now. Oh, they need yeah. Him, they need him back something fierce. Dude, he's on all those Verizon commercials now, too. Yeah. Of, like, him talking about his fucking stellar year, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's lame. Yeah, Brandon Marshall didn't add much to that offense. He only caught one pass the entire game. Oh, God, and see, that's the thing. That was, oh, my God. And I think that was the only time Eli Manning threw his way was that one catch he had. Odell, yeah, he's fucked. They're fucked this year. Yeah. Man, sorry, they're... All right, uh... so then we have the New Orleans Saints at the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings win it uh, 29 to 19. Uh, the Vikings offense is what surprised a lot of people. Everybody expected that defense to be good again this year. That offense looked pretty good, but it is the Saints. Um, we'll get to that later. And then we have another nail biter uh, San Diego Chargers at the Denver Broncos. San Diego almost came away with a win. They're not San Diego anymore. Plus. It's so fucking weird that they're not yeah, San Diego. Yeah, I'm sorry, they're anymore. the LA Chargers. Los Angeles Chargers. Go sorry. back to San Diego. It's where you belong. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just sorry. San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> the Los Angeles Chargers at the Denver Broncos. 24-21 Broncos. Um, the Chargers came roaring back in the second half. Yeah. And they almost won it. If they would have blocked on that field goal, they would have sent it to overtime. But apparently nobody wants to win on that team. So No. Oh, God. All right, so getting into week two of the NFL. Starting out tonight's game, the Houston Texans at the Cincinnati Bengals. I am picking Bengals. I'm going to go with Bengals. Uh, Seeing the highlights from that Texans game, was not feeling... Uh, I was not feeling any hope for them yeah. guys. And Deshaun Watson is getting his first ever NFL start in that game. He came in for Tom Savage in uh, that debacle last week. But he still didn't look like he was going to add much to that offense. Uh, I think Watson will be good, but he has some. He's going to go through growing pains, obviously, like every rookie does. Oh, yeah, very much so. Um, then we have the Buffalo Bills at the Carolina Panthers. I'm going to give it to the Panthers slightly. I didn't see much in that San Francisco game that made me really like the Panthers. I would have liked the Panthers to come out just roaring and blow the 49ers away, but they really didn't do that. Oh, man. I'm going to go with the Panthers. I, I, I have no, like, I don't know. 
I don't have any fight for either team, but the Bill watching their highlights, I feel like the Panthers have a, have a better chance. Then we have the Chicago Bears at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is going to be a hard one to call because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers should win this game. But at the same time, they didn't play week one. So they're still going to have that week one rust that a lot of teams have coming into this game in week two when the Chicago Bears already have a game under their belt. I'm right. still going to go with Tampa Bay just because I think they are the better of the two teams. I'm also going to go with the Buccaneers on this. Uh, yes, they did not play, but I also still don't have any high hopes for the Bears to do a lot this year. Yeah. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I'm giving it to the Steelers just because Heinz Field is an advantage. Um, there's something about that field, just the way that's shittily made. <laughs> that gives Pittsburgh <laughs> that gives Pittsburgh the their edge. iron work edge. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go weird. Uh, after watching, because I did watch the last half of the Vikings game, I'm gonna give the edge to the Vikings this time. Like, um, the Steelers to me, the Steelers last week's game, just watching those highlights, was just not a pretty game. It'll, anyways. it'll be interesting to see. Like I said, we're gonna get to this subject later after the pickums, but um, if Sam Bradford performs the way he did last week, I think Vikings come away with the win. But it's all dependent on him. Right. So I'm gonna go with the Vikings. Uh, I usually not my team to go with. Usually, I try any chance to be like not Vikings, but I'm gonna go with the Vikings. Then we have the Arizona Cardinals at the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I like the Cardinals in this. I'm going to go with the Colts. I'm kidding. I'm going to go with the Cardinals. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Uh, then we have the New England Patriots at the New Orleans Saints. I'm going New England. I think they're going to be a little bit pissed off after that Kansas City loss, and they're going to come out there, and they're just going to absolutely manhandle New Orleans. I'm also going with the Patriots, not because they're pissed off. It's because it's the Saints. <laughs> so. Yeah, Saints are pretty garbage. Right. Uh, the Cleveland Browns at the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going Baltimore. I'm going to go, yeah. This, some of these teams is kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think I know what it is. I think Browns will do what they do every time. They're going to be competitive, and then the fourth quarter is going to hit, and then the Ravens are going to run away with the game. And then we have the Philadelphia Eagles at the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going with the Chiefs. They looked really impressive last week. I'm going to go with the Eagles. I'm gonna, I, I want to see what they can do. It should be interesting. It'll be it'll be an interesting matchup. Uh, then we have the Tennessee Titans at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, I'm going with the Titans. I just think that the Titans are the more talented out of the two teams. They are. Uh, I'm gonna go Jacksonville though. And I, yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see because like I said, from what I saw in their highlights, I know it was just you know. If the only thing that I'm thinking of is that uh, Marcus Mariota is probably gonna put up some points on Jacksonville and. It's probably going to become a shootout, and Blake Bortles probably won't be able to keep up. Oh, Blake. Uh, then we have the New York Jets at the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> Again, sorry, Jesse. My team's going to manhandle the shit out of you. About to see some Jets go up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Miami Dolphins at the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. Um... God, God, I don't know. That's a tough one to call. Uh, I'm gonna go Dolphins. Yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna give it to the Dolphins. I want to see what the cut can do. So yeah, let's see what. Prove them all wrong, Cutler. Prove that I'm a hater wrong, or not. Whichever way, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, whatever you feel like doing. If you want to smoke that cigarette during the press conferences, go ahead. Does he really smoke cigarettes? No, it's just a meme. Oh, okay, I was just like, nah, that's hardcore. Uh, Dallas Cowboys at the Denver Broncos. Mm, I'm going Broncos. I think that the Broncos' defense looked really good. I think they're going to give Dak Prescott fits. I never really liked the Cowboys anyways. I always thought they were kind of mediocre. Or if they were doing good, they always choke. So I'm also going to go with the Broncos. Yeah, and mile high is a huge home field advantage. Yeah, because it's fucking elevated as shit. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco 49ers at the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going with Seattle. I'm also going after after last last week's 49ers. Yeah, dude. Um, this is an easy win for Seattle. This will probably bump back their morale, being like, "Oh my gosh, we beat a team." 
We have the Washington Redskins at the St. Louis Rams. Um, Los Angeles Rams. There we uh, go. God damn both of these teams. <laughs> um, I'm going Redskins. Uh, I think Rams got lucky facing a garbage fire team in the Indianapolis Colts. And now they're going to have like a real team coming in. So they're probably going to get their asses handed to them. I will also go Redskins. They're probably going to have a come da- back down to earth moment in that game. <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one for Ryan. Then we have the game that all eyes are going to be on this weekend. The Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta is opening up officially their new stadium in this game. Uh, This is a tough game. I think for both teams it's a tough call. Um, I give a slight edge to Atlanta. I think they're just one of those teams that kind of has the Packers number. Um, wow. I think it'll be a close game, but in the end, I think Atlanta just does, does just enough to come out with a win. Okay. I'm also, I was also going to go with Atlanta. Mm. See, I'm a Packers fan, but I'm also a realistic Packers that's fan. That's good. I'm glad. I, I, I know like, their limits. I was waiting. I was like, see, and that's the thing. Um, to quote Mike Daniels, I love Dragon Ball Z because Goku teaches me to push forward and stop the impossible. So they could totally... I, uh, the, the reason that I love the Packers is because they're one of those teams that they always get these big losses in the regular season. I think Atlanta's going to be one of them. But then the Packers usually come off back in the playoffs and beat those teams that beat them in the regular season. Dallas Cowboys are a great example last year. Uh, the Detroit Lions at the New York Jets, the Monday night game. I'm going with the Lions again. Um, I don't like what I saw out of New York. Um even if they have Odell back, like, it's still Eli Manning, and uh, I don't like Eli Manning. I yeah. think he's a garbage fire quarterback, and I don't understand why he's had such a long tenure in the NFL. I'm going to go with the Lions as well. All right, so with that out of the way, we're moving on to the subject that I kind of mentioned at the start of the podcast. Sam Bradford had the game of his fucking life against the New Orleans Saints. And um, this was inspired because uh, one of my friends, who was a hardcore Vikings fan, messaged me after that game, and he was like, how do you like that? I've never seen the Vikings look this good. And I responded with, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, I want to say exactly what I told him. Cool your tits. It was the New Orleans Saints. Right. We all know that the Saints are pretty trash. Um, that was an easy week one for the Minnesota Vikings. And this is what Bradford looked really good at the start of the season last year, too. And this is what I'm going to say about this season as That's well. Cool. The exact same thing that I said last year. One of these games, Bradford's going to start looking like Bradford. It happens every single year. He is the most inconsistent quarterback ever. He looks great at the start of the season. By the end of the season, he looks like he's like not even in the top 32, which there's only 32 starters in the NFL, so that tells you what I think of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's... My, all right, see, and this is, this is my thing about anyone who automatically... When people talk the preseason or week one games and their victory, and they're like, they're gonna make it to, they're gonna make it to the Super Bowl just after watching those games, mm. I think it's complete bullshit. To me, in my personal opinion, I think the first couple of games, in any, for me in any sport that I've ever watched, whether it be hockey, basketball, uh, football, the first couple of games to me is, it's not crunch time. The only, the only really, really important thing about usually I watch week one and week two very closely, but I tend to ignore all the games up until week five because after week five, that's when teams start getting real and that's when they implement the game plans that they're going to be using for the rest of the year and the offensive and defensive and looks people, that teams are going to see. And from just them. people are starting to look at them more. Yeah, but um, and yeah, that's another factor is that. By week five, teams have more game tape on other teams, so they game plan more accordingly based on what they're seeing. Uh, so this early in the season, is kind of hard to do that because you don't really know what looks you're going to get from offenses and defenses. I think that's a factor of what went into 
Minnesota's win is the New Orleans Saints probably really didn't expect, like, they probably didn't fully know what to expect from the Vikings this no. year. Um, especially with that new rookie, rookie running back. They haven't seen him yet, except in a little bit in preseason, so they really didn't know what to expect from him. Right. Now that teams have a little bit of game tape on them, they're going to game plan accordingly. I don't think we're going to see a performance like this again from Bradford after week five. Right. I will give him a couple more weeks mm. before it goes downhill. It's really, there's only – I always take games up until week five with a grain of salt – excluding games one and two, because games one and two are very crucial because historically in the NFL, every team that has started out 0-2 doesn't make it to the playoffs. So that has a big factor going forward. Um, But yeah, I think this was just a flash in the pan for Sam Bradford. He's going to start looking like Bradford eventually. Well, I think a lot of of these games were a big flash in the pan, like... Like I said, like as much as like the Kansas City Chiefs and New England, I don't think I think this is going to be their only big loss this year for New England. Yeah, I could totally see that. And I could see them coming back with a little, little bit more. Yeah, I thought the game was an interest. Like I thought, uh, real talk though, I thought the Minnesota game was an interesting game just to see AP back in the stadium. Yeah, it would have been more interesting if AP was more involved in the game. Which he was not. But you really didn't see him at all during that game, but... You know, it, it happens. He's old, too, though. Yeah. You know? um, and then getting into our next talking point, uh, the Packers' offense is off to a slow start again this season. Uh, it's kind of bringing up memories of last season. Um, and a lot of people are saying that this might be a problem going forward. Um, my thing about this is they say this every year. They always doubt the Packers every year and say that this isn't going to be their year. They're not going to make it to the playoffs this year. And they always do. Um, It seems like when there's more pressure on the Packers, that's when they really perform well. And I don't think this is going to be a major issue because we've seen in the past where uh, Rodgers gets off to a slow start during the start of the season, and everybody's just so like, what's wrong with Aaron Rodgers? And then in the last half of the season, he just explodes and become that becomes that playmaker that everybody knows out of nowhere and just torches defenses. Um, I think this is going to be a less of an issue than it was last year. I don't see Packers losing that many games this year just because that defense looks stout. That defense came to play. If that defense shows up like that every week, Rodgers isn't going to need to put up 28, 35 points every game to win it if that defense performs like they did. And I liked that Seattle game just because Seattle's offense is no pushover. Like, Russell Wilson's a playmaker. He can easily put up 300 yards passing on a defense and run for maybe like 50. So... It was impressive what they did against Seattle's defense. I see Packers being very good moving forward. They'll obviously suffer a couple of losses. I think one's coming next week unless they can put that pressure on Matt Ryan like they did on Russell Wilson. If you see Mike Daniels um, and Nick Perry just harassing Matt Ryan and harassing Devontae Freeman like they did to Russell Wilson, um, I think it goes Packers' way. But unless that happens, it's going to be Atlanta. All right. No, I, to- I totally understand that. Do you have anything else? No, that, that is our show today. So this has been Let the Fans Talk. Join us next week so you can hear all the scores and what the fuck we think. We're very heavily opinionated here. And, and that's we'll, completely fine. And we'll actually make it on time this time. Yeah. We're, we're going to be a little late tonight. All right. Bye.